uh, back on the channel, I don't know, what, last year, year four? Yeah. Yep. We made these for the Nelson Rig soft bags, which review on ADV, Trail Trash ADV doc, YouTube. I'll do a review someday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so they're for Collins V-Strom that you see on the channel lots and lots. Uh, they came with factory hard bags, but he wanted to use those for off-road riding, uh, the Nelson rigs. So to keep them from flapping into his wheel, uh, we devised a little mounting system. So we don't have the bike here today, but he brought the racks because on the most recent trail ride, which you may see part of because the XT didn't quite make it the whole way and we had to bail on it. Anyway, uh, this broke, so we, we wired it in the field. And so today we're going to uh, strengthen this up a little bit. So today we're going to uh, strengthen this up a little bit. So we're going to re-weld it, and we may add add a few corner gussets. Let's go ahead and just clean it off a little bit of the paint here. So we just cleaned up the edges. This is not a tutorial on how to weld, just so you know. Okay, I all I got is a little flux core welder that uh, does the job quite well, but uh, I am by no means a professional welder. We're all about function over form. Um, so what I've done is beveled the edge with the grinder, uh, cleaned up the so we down to clear and clean metal. And we're going to dig and start the welder up here. Yeah, if you want to learn to weld, check out uh, Welding Tips and Tricks by Jody on YouTube. It's awesome. First thing we're going to do is we're going to reattach where we attach this. I'm just going to give it a little tack and then get my hands out of the way. There we go, tack. Now, again, this is not a welding tutorial, but what I have to do here, because we're using flux core, without going into deep explanations, is there's flux in this. It's not solid uh, filler rod. And so there's a lot of slag. Um, and there's a, a pool of um, slag that forms on top of the on top of the metal. So if you're using gas shielded welding, you don't have to do this. But with flux core, once you stop welding, you gotta clean that slag off, or it'll get in the weld. Of course, that's bubbling the paint off because we didn't bother cleaning any of that. <laughs> All stuff. good, man. Function over form, as you said. Yep. But uh, those have been through quite a lot. Uh, I mean, they just get beat to shit when I ride, so they, they held up very well for two years. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm surprised. Filming with my eyes closed helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't, I don't know what that'll do to the camera. Man. Don't get too close. Don't really slag our... I'll, I'll, uh, I'll uh, put a glove on in case I touch that. All right, so we're back. Um, we've got these cut. The angles are mostly right. <laughs> anyway, um, boom, boom. We're gonna we're gonna gus at every corner. That gives them some more tie down points. Plus, it'll reinforce these corners. Now, this is fairly thin rod that we're using, and yes, they bend when you go over in an accident. But the whole point of this was so that when he kept dropping the bike, that these would actually <coughs> bend. So it kept dropping the bike? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Continually dropping the bike. I, th I thought you meant to say occasionally. Occasionally. Very rarely does he drop the bike, but when it happens, <laughs> when it happens, we want these to give and not break something else, like the main mount that's on the bike or, you know, the, the alloy uh, uh, supports, because a lot of the frame components on subframe are alloy. They're not steel. I mean, the, the backbone steel, but I think there's like there's the alloy, the luggage rack is all alloy. We don't want any of that stuff snapping. We want this to give, okay? And uh, where he's riding it off-road, the occasional tip over will happen, and we want these to be able to, to, be, uh, to take it, bend a little bit, and then be able to bend them back in the field, which is why we use smaller uh, rod instead of um, a thicker tube. Because once, once you bend a tube, 
it's bent. Like you're not going to get ever get it back straight 100%. Um, and it's hard to do that in the field without, without doing something else. This mild steel rod, however, you can bend and manipulate with some vice grips or a rock or, you know, wedge in between a tree trunk or something. Like you, you, there's something you can do in the field to repair it. So uh, easily welded up, like if he was off, uh, Colin, it's on the channel, he did the, uh, what's it, the Great North? Oh, True Northeast trip. True Northeast yeah. trip, right? So if he rolls into some town somewhere, you know, and needs to have something welded, we can weld it, right? Not every place can weld aluminum, not every place can straighten a weld, you know, pipe, tubing. This stuff, shit simple. All right. Function the way. over form. That's right. That out of the way, let's get the welding gloves back on and start getting some welding done here. Nope. That's that. And yes, they make clamps for this stuff. Don't care. That's what welding gloves are for. And the beauty of flux core is you don't have to spend a lot of time cleaning the metal. You got a little paint on there, no big deal. It's going to burn through. I will do this though. I'm going to move my grounding clamp. So we're, Ooh, oh, yeah, sorry, man. I'm going to move the grounding clamp clamp onto something a little more substantial here just to make sure I get a good, good ground. All right, we're all done. We got both racks finished here. I could do a close up on the uh, the welds, but you'll just you know laugh. Uh, Colin's going to clean these up at home and just give them a little paint. But basically, we've got gusset, 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 and that'll allow them to put straps through here, and that'll hold the straps from moving around on the on it. Plus, give it a little more rigidity without adding a whole lot of weight. So this should really give them a little bit extra. So I mean, again, we could take some extra time and gusset here. But I think it'll be fine. That's held up under some, you know, really big abuse already. If it breaks again, we'll always can come back and, and give it another pass. And yeah, I mean, we could take a file and really clean up these welds nice and pretty. But again, we're just trying to make this work. And I'm just using the cheap Canadian Tire Flux Core welder. Be able to see that, but, but basically that's it. I mean, yeah, it looks a little like, what, grape seed and bird shit or whatever, but we don't care. <laughs> so, all right. Um, depending on when you see this, we also have a series coming up on the XT. Our last group ride together, the XT wasn't running right because I made some changes last minute that I shouldn't have done. I have a video explaining, trying to diagnose that. At least part one is filmed. We'll have part two coming up shortly after that too. Colin's got a busy schedule here in the next few weeks, so it's hard to say when those videos will come out, but they'll come out at some point. In any case, we usually do ride videos, but I think we're going to try to do a few more of these uh, garage videos. If you guys are interested, uh, like or comment, you know, and let us know that the, you, you do enjoy this, the garage type content too, because we'll, we'll start filming a little more of it. Just to show you, Colin wants to grab the camera. Over here, we've got a Buell. So it's a 2003 Harley Davidson Buell. Blast. We put custom rear sets on it. Now one sec, the tripod's a little too long. Oh, that's all right. There we go. We got some custom rear sets on it that I, that I built over the last few days. Uh, we've got some exhaust work to do. Uh, we also are changing the handlebars out. And then over here, we have another series that I haven't been filming, but I could, if you guys are interested in this sort of thing. But it's a 1994 KE100 with a seized motor that was sorely abused. So we've stripped it to the frame and painted. Um, I've still got the rims to clean up. We've got the engine over here in a box. Uh, we had uh, the kids that had it before I got it had ran it on straight gas and fried the piston uh, to the cylinder wall. So we had the cylinder cleaned up, repaired and re coated coated. Uh, we got a Wiseco forged piston going in and then we're gonna have a working K100 uh, also on the channel, at least for a little while until we decide what to do with it. So yeah, there's there's other projects going on. If you guys are interested in this content, like and uh, comment down below, and we'll try to have some more of it. All right, till next time. See you later.